Okay, again, um, welcome students to this uh, another uh, lecture of uh, Linux programming and scripting. Today we will be continuing the Perl. Um, last time we started uh, talking about um, some of the uh, concepts of Perl, uh, which is slightly advanced than what we talked about before. So we will be continuing uh, the same discussion uh, today. Um, what I will do is I will start with uh, the recap and then I think uh, you remember I assigned a quiz, uh, a, a simple problem to you which I wanted you to experiment and find out uh, the result from uh, the problem. Uh, so I will explain that problem again um, and then we will continue on with uh, today's uh, topics. Um, today we will be focusing mainly on uh, further um, some of the strings and some scalar operations and uh, some some more commands that we see. Again, uh, let's look at uh, what we did uh, in the last uh, lecture. Uh, we studied about the operators essentially, and then in Perl, the operators are uh, superset of uh, C, algo, and Pascal um, operators. Um, there is an automatic conversion between strings and numbers. Uh, we saw that actually the the strings uh, basically uh, the number part of the string is actually kept and uh, the remaining portion is uh, just uh, turned to null. Uh, and then the operators wise actually there are many operators uh, main ones are addition, subtraction, multiplication, uh, division, modulus and exponents and these are all the arithmetic operators. Then we have a bunch of uh, relational operators that go between the numbers and the strings. These are less than, greater than, um, equal to, not equal to, uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, um, things like that we already saw that uh, and in the table as to how to use the relational operations operators uh, and then we also like to did basically what is the difference between if you have a number as a variable or a string as a variable. Then there is also this uh, concatenation operation uh, operator which is uh, pretty much this dot which is represented as the dot. Um, uh, so that is um, that is uh, another one um, so here you can see that this is the one and then uh, we also saw the string repetition operator which is the X essentially. Um, this one actually when we say um, like we say like um, if we assign the string to name and then uh, that, that dollar uh, name times 3 is like it will say name 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 uh, 3 times and then we saw like I mean how that uh, works with the thing. One of the key concepts that I introduced uh, in last uh, lecture was this concept of the operator president's table. Um, here the president's uh, the first one between the various operators it goes from uh, top to bottom this is the highest presidents essentially um, operators and then basically like these are lower presidents. So if these operators come together first the these higher presidents operators will be evaluated before evaluating any of the lower presidents. So that is the first rule that we saw and then between the operators it goes by this associated. So for example like I mean if you think about uh, exponentiation operation. Uh, and you have multiple ones like um, say um, uh, 6 exponential 2 exponential 1 or something like that or 0. So how the way that it, it evaluates is from right to left so basically it evaluates this first and then it evaluates this. Whereas uh, an operation like uh, plus or minus or multiplication they will be like I mean so plus 2 minus 3 is basically evaluated first and then the result is evaluated against it. So it goes this way, it goes this way. So um, that is the other 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 uh, key aspect that we learn um, with this we, we are able to solve. So some of the things that are um, um, that why I want you to pay attention to are one is this non associative ones this is uh, the increment decrement which is what we will be talking about today. Um, 
also like these kind of things basically list operators so those are all like the non associative ones so pay attention to these essentially like i mean those so this is, this will become important as you go to um, more stuff so anyway um so now we'll be we'll looking to the next one um, so we actually like i mean i asked uh, you this one question where we define the dollar a as 5 and then uh, this b is actually now using this uh, binary operator which is two operators combined plus one equal to uh, which traditionally represents a dollar a equals dollar a plus 2 but now if you do this why is this bad and what is the value of dollar b this is the question that i asked uh, during the last lecture um so i want to give you the answer uh, today uh, the number one is essentially why it is bad is because what you expect will never be the result of this expression so here you may expect that basically like this is dollar b is actually 7 times 3 which should be 21 but that's not the case here so why is it not the case and what is the actual value so before that i mean if you look at the president's rule like i mean says basically in this kind of scenario the order does not matter so since the order does not matter assignment can and in fact will happen before the increment so what that means is a is assigned a value of 2 and here also a is assigned a value of 2 whereas the increment operation is just omitted it happens but those results are not same hence the actual answer is this 25 which is dollar a times dollar a um for people who have already experimented with this and uh, got this answer um that's great uh for people who haven't uh, gotten this answer i'll try to uh, i'll ask you to try to experiment this uh, in your labs and see whether you are getting this answer if you don't get this answer please let me know like uh, send me an email with uh, what the answer that you got and then we can discuss um, what is the one. but anyway the bottom line is um doing these kind of uh, things are very tricky and uh, never use these kind of syntax uh, unless you are ultimately you are um, absolutely sure that that's what you uh, are intended to so that pretty much covers uh, what we did um, last time uh, so in today i'm going to actually talk about uh, more uh, sort of a binary operator we will talk about a unary operator um, which is essentially like the auto increment and auto decrement and then i'll talk about some of the caveats on that and then we will go into more interesting topics uh, and i'll um, talk about some of the things um, as to how you can manipulate uh, programs for programs so without uh, much ado let's uh, look at the um, today's lecture so the first one is the auto increment um we call it auto increment so like both uh, plus plus as well as minus minus both of them are there so this is the auto decrement but these are all the unary operators meaning that they operate only on one variable you don't need the second variable um and um these kind of operations are very similar to c so you already saw like i mean c there are uh, several of these kind of things like uh, either i plus plus things like that that we al- always give within the loops and things like that so they are very similar to c again two forms are supported one is a prefix and the other one is a suffix the prefix is when you have the operator in the front and then followed by the variable or the suffix is essentially like i mean it's basically the operation or the operator is uh, after the variable so here um, if you look at it basically um, and then one one thing to note is uh, these operators are um, applied only to the variables you cannot apply this to an expression I mean like like dollar x plus dollar y and then you cannot say like i'm okay plus plus something like that so um, you need to make sure that um, 
um, you reduce this thing and then do that or you can do like that well, x, x plus plus and then plus dollar y plus plus this is a valid syntax but when you write these kind of syntax there are some issues um, so we will learn about that but before that let us look at the simple example so a is assigned to 70 minus minus dollar a, a gives uh, actually like this should be 6 so it increments by 1 and this should be 5 okay, sorry for the typo so and then b is 5 so here essentially like I mean it is decremented by 1 and then again another decrement by 1 so um, this is the result uh, but now if you use this and in, uh, actually there is a difference between the prefix and the suffix so let us see like what is the difference between the prefix and suffix um, so uh, here are some of the rules basically like used within the uh, an expression you know, there is a difference between uh, these two expressions these two um, 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 values so if you are just using it as a standalone like this it is okay basically like it still retains the value like it decrements it and puts the value in A so the A is 6 and here it is basically like it finally end of the operation is actually like there is a decrement so the decrement of value is assigned to B so it is still 5 but if you are using um, inside an expression then there is a difference between like the one these two ones this first case essentially that is listed here which is um, the the value of a before it is incremented will be used in the expression while for the second one the value of a after the implementation is actually used in the expression so let us look at uh, one small example um, here a is assigned as 4 and then we basically ask it to print dollar a minus minus and then print minus minus dollar a so what we get is actually like 4 2 more so we expect that this should be like 3 2 so the reason why this 4 is um, unchanged is because it basically like this treats it as an expression and it prints this value before actually like doing the decrement so um, basically like it prints the value of 4 and then it decrements the a so now the dollar a is actually equal to 3 at the end of this expression but now when we go into the print next one the the, the 2 uh, negative sign actually like decrements 3 further to 2 and then basically like that is the value that a retains and then that is what it gets printed out which is 2 so it is instead of 3 2 we actually get 4 2 so again understand the, the consequence understand uh, how per behaves and then uh, you you will be able to actually uh, uh, exactly do what you are intended to do okay um, we will again revisit uh, this concept um, other program but I want to leave you, leave you, leave you with uh, this essentially so now um, there are two important uh, functions that we will learn um, I just wanted to highlight the difference between these two functions what exactly do they do first of all and then what are the differences between those two functions um, and then how to use them in uh, various uh, code segments uh, so I will illustrate through the code segments the two functions that are uh, kind of integral to um, Perl are uh, this chalk and charm so essentially like I mean they are listed here uh, the chop essentially removes the last character of the operand or of this argument and then uh, returns the removed character um, string essentially in this case um, whereas a charm actually removes the end of line character this is very important it, it has this end of line character and then um, it remain it uh, returns the number of characters removed so if you do like I mean say like a dollar str 
equal to chop dollar string the str will have the string with the last one removed whereas if you do the dollar str equal to chop dollar string this one you will get just either str will be a zero or a one based on whether chomp removed the character or not so that's one of the key key differences essentially uh, so one question i have is what is this end of line character um, is this a fixed one like i mean for example this uh, backslash n that we used in uh, previous classes how do we even change it so can we redefine the the end of line character because one of the things that is um, kind of um, we will go into is uh, to read the file um, mainly the Perl programs have a very similar syntax basically they will um, open a file using a file handle so open uh, any file um, with a handle basically like HTTP and then draw a file name once you open the file name then you will start reading the, the lines inside the file which is using a while command while hd so it reads line by line so this is line by line so now we have this line by line that is what is uh, clearly like defined uh, but can we change this to some blocks actually so that we can input the whole block inside the program how do we do that so uh, in Perl actually it provides a lot of uh, special characters one of them is um, this dollar slash the dollar slash is actually that stores the end of line character so by default dollar slash equal to dollar n or sorry backslash n So now um, you can see actually um, if it is backslash n you can change whichever character that you want say like I mean you have a um, semicolon delimited file you simply change this to semicolon so then it, it, it treats semicolon as the end of line characters and, and it reads all the way up to that semicolon. So processing like blocks of uh, uh, data like uh, say like a def file or something these commands are much more useful and then basically like well, if you understand that the dollar um, slash is the character that denotes the end of line then you can easily go there and modify that and say that okay my end of line character is actually uh, this period that means that it will read every sentence whether it, it does not matter whether it confirms to just one line or multiple lines it reads every sentence so again it is easy way to actually uh, alter the behavior now, <coughs> um, so now um, let us see like some of the examples of charm um, again I, I did not want to actually uh, put examples for the chop function itself the reason is uh, even though the chop is also used fairly closely like I mean similar to the chop chop is more interesting uh, chop is essentially like I mean it just removes the, the last character and gives you back the string itself so uh, let us see like uh, some of the examples of chop so here it is basically it is like a simple uh, text read as I mentioned the same thing basically like I mean in this case like I mean you are actually going to read from the standard end this uh, we will see in like later on as to how we can do it um, and then um, essentially um, um, this code segment says essentially like I have a, our own variable that we assign it to the standard in so that um, it waits for the standard in input until we press the new line that is when it goes into the, the next command so here the chomp dollar text is essentially like I mean it is taking this one and then just removing the end of line character from the end as you know like I mean when you feed into the standard in 
we have to press the enter in order to go to the next uh, step and then this one prints out the the uh, the um, the dollar and this continues on until uh, we put nothing and then this is enter. So this is a one way of actually looping. This this is most common loop, which is the while loop in um, uh, Perl. And for anything and everything, we'll most likely use a while loop because uh, we don't know when the file will end. So we operate on one line at a time until the file ends. So we still use that while loop. In, as one of the main uh, workhorses of uh, Perl program. So now let's look at another example where this um, the chop is used in an array, basically. So in this array, you can see that actually the Bob has a new line character, and Fred has a new line character. So when we do like a print before chop, and then when we print the array, it just prints exactly the same. Thing. Only thing is, this Jill is coming in the next line. And same as spread, and then this will like then we get one line on the tip. So it will be like Bob, Jill, and Fred. So this forms one uh, array definition. So this is useful in here. This is the same as this uh, chomp array. This is, uh, sorry, actually, uh, so this is the same as this here. So now let us see like I mean what happens when you do a chomp on this array when you do the chomp on the array actually like these two new lines are taken out so then the array will simply be Bob, Jill and Fred so and this is probably what we wanted to do so that is basically like using the chomp, chomp function. So now there is a third use model um, which is actually uh, using the uh, the charm in the hash um, again in this case actually like hash is something that we have not uh, talked about um, hash is very also like similar to in concept to the C language. Um, a hash essentially is uh, uh, a labeled or a linked list or not even linked list just a list basically which has an ordered pair uh, concept which is um, basically uh, it is uh, similar to an associative array you can say um, in fact it is an associative array so here um, for example uh, in the associated array, we saw like I mean, actually, like you have to specify an even number of uh, elements, and then it pairs up the first again, first with the second, second with the third, I mean, sorry, third with the fourth, and fifth with the sixth kind of um, thing. So, here you can see, like, basically, uh, uh, first is actually uh, it's, uh, it has this one as the, its main um, value, the hash itself is the first. And then the second has two as a value, and then the third has thirteen. I mean, three as a value, and everything is followed by the new line character. And then once we do the charm of the hash, then um, we can directly get this number basically. Um, so it, it will tell you, like I mean, first all in one, and then uh, second. Sorry, you know, second column two, and then third column three. These these things will be in the same line. Okay. So they haven't modified the line. And then after that, there will be a print uh, print uh, the new line character. So I hope this one is uh, clear. Essentially, like I mean, so the charm essentially, like I mean, can it's a versatile function. You can use it in many 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 ways. Uh, and main inside the the Perl program, uh, the three main ways of using chomp are mentioned here. Um, and then uh, essentially, uh, um, basically, what it does is it removes the you know, characters uh, from the uh, within the thing, and it gives you the the result 
uh, after removing the new one uh, what it returns itself is it's only like a zero or one based on how many characters it's removed but at least um, uh, you will the, the updated string is kept in the original variable itself so that you can write out that uh, original variable so I hope uh, this section is clear um, now let's talk about the interpolation of uh, scalars and strings. So um, the so in a, within a string, like I mean, if you're using a variable, whether it's scalar or um, um, a string, that's evaluated um, inside a double quoted string. So if you use the double quoted that we already know, basically. Um, um, then you know that basically like uh, the double quoted strings uh, inside any like dollar variable will always be evaluated. If the variable has not been assigned a value, the variable is replaced with just an empty string. So if it, there is no value to this, it just basically becomes an empty string. Nothing there. Now um, there is no double substitution within the um, Interpolation. So, if you have like a nested thing, basically like dollar x, y, z, and then uh, actually like further down, all those uh, things basically uh, those nested ones are not allowed. So, you cannot have like another quote and then something else and then end quote and use it this as a parenthesis. That thing is not allowed in in for. So, um, so that is another rule, and then um, finally, like I mean, um, the longest possible name will be used. Um, actually, sorry, I missed one thing. So we can use the parenthesis to separate a variable from the surrounding text. So, for example, uh, you have like the um, name of my car. This is the long variable. Um, or you want to just say like I mean okay, I want the name as the variable so if you want to just ask, or ask for the, the, the name then you can just say like dollar in parenthesis name and then uh, off my power. so this is one way of doing it and we will we will actually like go through some of the examples that uh, will make this concept very clear. And then the other thing uh, to note is also like the longest possible name will be used as the variable inside the string. So um, if it cannot stop, it just goes on and on until it finds the, the name. So now uh, let's look at some of the examples um, of uh, strings and uh, the scalar uh, variables. So. Um, so here there are some examples. Uh, so dollar a is assigned to Fred, and note the quotations here. And then uh, we say basically like uh, some text uh, a. So what will happen? So here a is assigned to Fred. So we say like b is uh, some text and dollar a that is going to have some text Fred. So this is. Evaluated. Now, when you say like now what, since the dollar what is not defined, that's left as an empty string. So it's basically just now. Now what we are doing is we are using a single quote to assign Fred um, to, to dollar x. So one thing to note is in uh, when you are using the single quote, only the backslash and uh, the single quote itself. Can be escaped. All the others you don't need to escape. So you can even if you keep as dollar, it's going to print dollar set. So let's look at that. Yeah. So it is printing dollar. Set. Now um, we say like okay, um, dollar y is uh, high s high dollar x. So in this case, what it prints out is the whole dollar set because it's understood understood dollar set as the value. Of that particular variable. And then here again a single quote 
with the space all the space is months basically like you get the double quotes and no high basically. and here it is a concatenation operation essentially. So, it basically like puts test followed by blank and then dot and then probably like followed by another blank here. So, there are two blanks within the four tests. And then the last but not the least uh, test uh, escaping the dollar basically it prints out as dollar f. So, let us look at some more examples. So, this is kind of interesting ones actually. So, um, we are saying dollar sun to pay and dollar Sunday is uh, to wrong. So, um, when we say like I mean um, dollar x equal to it is a Sunday, it will just say like it is wrong. Now, as the next one is sun space day, then it will say it is a pay day because uh, sun is assigned to pay. And if it is this is the if you put that inside the parenthesis, this will have the same effect. Um, the only thing is, like I mean, now the blank spaces are all gone, so it's right next to it. So, so basically, like there's no blank space at all. So it just prints out as it's Sunday. Yeah. So the, here the the, this this variable is being replaced, and then now you get this today. Now the concatenation operation essentially like I so again the dollar sun because it's within the double quotes that is expanded as day, and then since there is a concatenation operation, it's just day. So we still get it's a payday from uh, in this this one. So. Um, So that is one thing and then um, finally like I mean we can also split this in multiple lines and uh, this um, operator can be used in many, many multiple times as well concatenation operation. So that means that it is uh, it is and then uh, quote which is um, concatenated with dollar sign which is concatenated with uh, um, just the day, so finally you will get this result. It's a payday, or it's payday. So now um, let's uh, get some more examples. Essentially, uh, these are other escape characters that um, we kind of touched upon it, but not really learned. One is the escape uppercase U. This stands for convert that everything in this particular string into our case. So that's what happens. And then we assign B to just a hello, phrase hello, which is the same here. And then if we apply that same transformation, like the backslash U on the entire um, variable B, then we get the same as A. Which is uh, hello, and then if you use a lowercase b u, then it only changes the first one, and then it continues on with uh, just one h e l l o. So let's see what happens. Same thing, and then finally, like I mean, if you um, uh, do a replacement of u with uh, uppercase l, um, and then um, with uh, the same as this uh, other hello, other person hello. Here, basically, like we find that actually uh, we can get uh, the same uh, hello using this uh, method. Okay, then uh, now we come to another important uh, item in uh, Perl, which is the standard in. As I mentioned, essentially standard in is used for um, getting the values or getting the input from the uh, um, terminal itself. So uh, the key thing is, like every time we use the standard in in place of a scalar, 
uh, in place where the scalar is expected the pearls read the next line from std in so this is one way of doing an interactive session where um, you can use std in to import a value from outside world so the typically the std in uh, reads as a line and so it reads the everything until the new line is uh, hit basically so and it includes that new line character so you need to do like a chop or a chop and to uh, remove that new line character and then usually the default um, uh, std in is the terminal that you are used to and familiar with okay. so um, that's for the standard in um, let's see like i mean so some of the key examples here um, one is we assign the dollar x uh, or std in standard in to dollar x and then we do like a chop uh, dollar x um, and then um, here uh, what we get is essentially um, the std in without the last character so it be like you know std in about um another short hand form for writing this is uh, we directly do the chop um so in this one basically like uh, we have to look into the uh, presence matrix but um first assigns this and then it chops basically resulting value um and many people just write like this as a standard practice because this also gets the line by line and then for every line immediately like a start executing this loop and then continuously it helps you uh, it executes a loop so the next operator is the print operator uh, this is also like something that we are familiar with so i'll introduce all the familiar topics first before going into much more uh, complex and advanced topics so here uh, a print operator observe that uh, they have a parenthesis and we actually put this parenthesis but it's kind of redundant basically like so like uh, the standard practice people don't put this uh, parenthesis they directly write whatever they want to write so um, here basically like i mean this particular program just prints out uh, hello world whether we use the parenthesis or not the outcome is still going to be just uh, hello world um so um, pretty much like i mean uh, print is uh, fairly easy there is one more thing which is uh, the format we will talk about this in uh, one of the other lectures um at this point i want you to understand just the basic uh, print command and how to use it within the um the file itself essentially so so on one hand we use the stdin for taking the input from a terminal and on the other hand we also use uh, print to print to the terminal um so um so those two commands go hand in hand now the next one next topic is this uh, undefined uh, concept essentially so um um essentially like i mean the if it is a numerical variable we saw that actually like the string basically is of an empty whereas in a numerical value the variable has uh, the value set as under if it if you use it before it it's given a value so what is what is mean by uh, use before it is given a value so every variable has some value uh, that we need to initialize so um, as a standard practice we can say like a dollar x y z equal to 0 um if you don't do this and then say like i mean if you're using like um um 
dollar a dollar uh, abc plus dollar xyz equals to or equals to dollar lmn so this lmn equal to dollar uh, so this is maybe the uh, this is one of the things and then um, the xyz and then at this point like if dollar xyz is not defined uh, and only the dollar abc is defined then you get an undef value for this in this case actually like we have defined this as zero maybe like it's okay but abc is not defined so this becomes undef and uh, undef is typically treated as zero for all the numbered operations so even though it is um, under the resulting answer like I mean it will be uh, just uh, 0 plus x y z by n x y z so this is whatever the value is uh, that what we get then uh, for string operation it is treated as an empty string which is uh, already told you the double quote of string basically so it is used as that uh, uh, that one uh, now the std in actually returns this undef if there are no more data so essentially it goes into the loop it reads all the files and basically like it puts on the list and everything um, it reads that uh, essentially uh, whatever we are providing it from the std in and as we hit enter it goes on until we hit like nothing basically like then that returns an undef uh, value okay um, so I think like uh, I am going to stop at this point and uh, just to do a recap of uh, what we did today. Uh, and then we can actually uh, come back uh, next week uh, or next class and then uh, we can pick it up from this point. So today we focus mainly on uh, I hope uh, you remember all these things. Um, there are two main topics essentially uh, one is uh, we talked about this uh, auto increment and the auto decrement and how do we uh, use them in the overall uh, uh, programs uh, so this is a an handy way of doing it most uh, people use it inside the for loop actually so for loops looks like something like this for dollar i equal to 0 semicolon dollar i less than 10 semicolon dollar i plus plus and then two. So um, this dollar i plus plus is one way to use it, or you can also use it as plus plus i. And then you know the difference between those two. Uh, so then, uh, so those are part of this rule. And then uh, we also went through the chop and the chomp functions. Uh, chop mainly works with strings and basically it can do it for any string whereas um, the chomp actually removes the new line character from within the, uh, the page so um, uh, and then uh, the new line character itself can be modified so uh, as I mentioned basically uh, currently the new line character uh, as backslash n is actually set to this variable dollar slash so we can capture this dollar slash and move to whichever one that we want basically and then uh, we can uh, use that for uh, uh, as the um, um, in the flying character and then we saw the examples of charm uh, across many many uh, different disciplines for example um, uh, here it is basically um, um, just the standard way of using the charm. Uh, just applied to a particular uh, string variable uh, here the same chomp is used uh, inside an array how we can make it better and then the finally like I mean the um, how do we use uh, chomp 
inside a hash function and then I briefly introduce this hash to you essentially it, it is an ordered pair basically like I mean you can always think of like hash um, and then first equals uh, and this can go like I mean many 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 things basically like I mean you know just uh, a hash uh, of the first uh, but you can you can think of like uh, very many ways of using this construct. And we will uh, visit uh, some of the main constraints of this construct. Uh, and then we also talked about the interpolation of uh, scalars uh, and strings, essentially, uh, where we said that basically the variable interpolation occurs uh, inside the double quoted string. So that those are the main main things. Uh, and then if the variable is not being assigned uh, a value, then it is replaced with an empty string. And there are no double substitution, meaning like you cannot apply the transform many times or different transform at different times within the same string. And then uh, this uh, parenthesis will be used to denote the, which one is the uh, the um, um, actual variable. So here you can say like name of my car something like that and then you, you are only interested in uh, the dollar name then you can just uh, say basically um, this, uh, this parenthesis on either side and off whatever and that essentially um, uh, gives only like the name as the variable and not the whole lot of the other, other characters and then um, one thing is also like I mean once you don't have this then it uses the longest possible name uh, to be used as a variable for example in this one if you do not use this parenthesis then we go like all the way down from this. And then we saw some of the examples of uh, this uh, string manipulation uh, I hope you remember these uh, things. And then we also saw some uh, the substitution characters like uh, backslash uh, u, which stands for uppercase throughout. So it takes the uh, hello in lowercase and then just push it out to the uppercase. So this is something like the transliteration example that we saw a uh, couple of uh, classes ago. And then here again the same thing basically, like it doesn't matter whether you are escaping the color um, or not. And then uh, here essentially like uh, 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 it will basically like only change the first character of the dollar B the remaining are left in time and here essentially like I mean this will change uh, all the, the lower case uh, numbers to LSC or the Louisiana or actually like sorry uh, it is the it replaces the U with uh, L so basically uh, that is um, that is the effect of this one so let us see what, what happens here. So it, it basically keeps the same value as uh, this one. Because originally it was all like uppercase, and now it basically like it keeps the first character as the same as H, uppercase H, and then it uh, went in lowercase on the remaining one, which is using this uh, uppercase L. If you use a lowercase L, then it will only like lowercase the first letter, first character, and then the remaining ones it will leave them as is. So I want you to understand that also. So and then we also saw about the std in uh, how we uh, use the std in um, and uh, the, the basically like in different ways of uh, uh, combining the std in with the chop um, and then this is the how we printed the hello world using the print operator now this is another one. So in the print operator right now we studied basically the um, just how to print a string. Um, there are also like formatting options which are available. Uh, 
um, and then we also can assign uh, a return code help debug it further. So these two topics we will be talking about it as we go along um, because these are important for uh, other other uh, purposes as well. And then we also saw about this uh, undef uh, basically like I mean what happens when a particular uh, variable is not defined how does um, Perl react and basically like how it uh, calls it as an undefined uh, value. So um, I think uh, that is pretty much it uh, for uh, today's lecture. Um, we will pick it up from uh, next week. I will be assigning some more uh, assignments essentially so that um, you can practice your uh, Perl so far, whatever you have learned in terms of uh, um, how to uh, build uh, better programs uh, using the Perl language. Okay. Thank you very much.